Hello everyone, uh, this is Pedro from Pytalista with one more video. It's been a while, uh, I have been in the channel. So today I'm gonna give a demo. Uh, I've searched on the internet, I had to do something for a client. Uh, there is no tutorial on the YouTube that explains how to run Airflow and DBT in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, maybe it's not a very popular uh, usage, but it is available. So I'm just gonna run through that tutorial here. I think it's being posted um, recently, kind of, kind of recently, uh, April 2025. We are beginning of August, today is 1st of August, but there seems to be um, no video on the internet. Uh, can be a quite lengthy setup, but I'll kind of like just set up the Airflow in Fabric. I'll make sure that I've, I've got my service principal, tenant ID, client ID, and secret. I've done many videos about service principal, but I think it's not something that's so complicated. I'm just gonna, I, I, can, I can do the service principal, but that's very quickly, but I'm not going to set up the warehouse with sample data. Uh, this is gonna be the prerequisite. Uh, you will be able to figure out that easily. The hardest part is to make the Airflow and DBT working together uh, and troubleshoot everything. So going back to what are the prerequisites here? The top two essential is that you need to have a Azure subscription and then you have to have privilege to create service principle. And also you need to have a Fabric workspace capacity where you can run Fabric items. All right, so the steps would be that I've already done. So you need to create a workspace. I create a workspace called Airflow and I have a uh, warehouse. So DBT only works with warehouses at the moment. Um, and then I um, just build a pipeline to load a sample data uh, in my warehouse on the, if you see on the um, example here, they are using that um, the New York tax screen, which is gonna query a uh, table. So what I'm doing here, I'm just using uh, the New York tax screen parquet sample data, and I'm just checking in um, in that warehouse. That's something that's built in Fabric. I just call it taxi my warehouse, and then at the with that sample, there will be only one table in your which is this one, which is called New York City TLC. I don't know what TLC stands for, but that's the table. Okay, that's the minimum that you have to do. And then second step, you obviously, if you follow the tutorial, uh, you need to create a service principle, which I've already done. So that's the service principle here. So to create a new one, it's pretty simple. You go to enter ID, uh, and then you go to app registration and then you put new registration and then you just give it a name and then register. Once you register, uh, that's gonna take you to something like, uh, in my case, here is the one that I call Airflow. And then you need to copy those uh, information in a safe place, uh, client ID, which is that one, uh, the object, uh, the tenant, which is this one. And then you need to create a um, secret. You go to certificate and secrets and they create, I've created a new one here. It's hidden, but once you create a new secret, give it a name and add. So that's gonna give you a value and then you have, you have to save that. So that's the first step. And then you need to go to your workspace here. Uh, in this case is this one and then I go to manage access. Uh, I give uh, my uh, Airflow service principle admin rights to my workspace. That's a prerequisite. So once you've done that, so the second, the, the last step, that's what's important for this tutorial here is to create an Airflow instance. So I'm gonna create an Airflow instance called uh, Airflow. I'll call it Airflow Demo. And then you just click, click Create. 
And then after that, I'm just gonna create uh, the environmental variables for that uh, example. So it go, it's still provisioning and then starting the cluster. You see that. So before the cluster start, let me just show what should be a minimal uh, project for a Airflow and DBT. So if you follow the tutorial here, so I create a fabric warehouse and a fabric uh, workspace job, just done that. So it shows you uh, requirements, uh, what should be in the project. So first thing you need to install on your Airflow environment, those two libraries. So the Astronomer Cosmos and the DBT Fabric. And then I create a project that I've already done in my VS Code and it's already in Git. I'll explain that how to sync Git to Airflow in Fabric. So that's the um, structure of the projects. There is the root directory, which is the one called DAG. And then you would have all your DAGs on that folder. And then I would have a folder called New York City Tax Screen where my DBT files would be. So I have one file for profiles that which is gonna show my connections and my environmental variables and how I'm gonna authenticate to that DBT instance. Uh, to my uh, database, in this case, my warehouse, uh, my dbt project configurations, uh, and name my models. I'm gonna have a simple model, which is the way dbt works. And I have got a length video about dbt that I'll put in the description here. Uh, it's not the uh, intent here to uh, teach dbt, but just to make dbt works in Fabric. Uh, ignore this one, we're not gonna use that uh, folder here. So I just need to have one with SQL. So this is an example of, of how to create those in using the uh, built-in uh, IDE for Airflow in Fabric, but we are using uh, GitHub, so don't need to worry about it. But this is explain uh, what should be in the files. Oh, and then I'm just gonna jump to VS Code to explain that. So as, a, as it showed on the instructions, you need like a DAG folder. And I have uh, this, my DAG folder here that I just copy and paste from the tutorial. I'll put the link of the GitHub so you can clone and do it yourself. Uh, I have the requirements file here. So in the root directory, and then I have the New York Tech screen folder where I have my DBT project just copy and paste. Uh, and then the profiles I've modified a little bit because, because I wanted to commit to Git, I could not commit to Git with the environmental variables or secrets here because GitHub would complain that I would expose my credentials, which makes sense. So all the environment variables I put in, uh, in a fabric airflow environment variables management, I'll show you right now how to do it. So, so th this is copy and paste. It's important this one to match with the database that you created in the warehouse. So in this case, my database is called Taxi. So if I go, oh, my mouse is a little bit, yeah. So if I go back, I'll just show you the, my warehouse here. Go here on my warehouse, it's called taxi. So, all right, so uh, it looks like my my pool are still starting. I have to wait until, it can take up to five to six minutes. So it's been four minutes. I'll, I'll pause and wait when it's that's ready. I uh, made a mistake here. So I had changed my workspace settings to test like a pool. So if I go on data factory on my workspace settings, 
Um, I, I'm using this startup pool, like it's a more developer, smaller pool that's far up quicker. So I'm just gonna, I had created like a custom pool, which is more powerful, but it takes more time to spin up. So for that, I'm gonna recreate that partial flow job uh, object. I'm just gonna call it partial flow job as a default. And I'm gonna create it and I hope this time the cluster will start up quicker because it was taking like 10 to 15 minutes. And then I just like, okay, let's just stop it and start again. Yeah, let's see if that one is gonna be, yeah, that one is instantly provisioned. So that's what I said, um, what is um, file uh, storage for my DAGs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first go to this cog here and set up my environment. First thing, I'm gonna install those two libraries here which is in the requirements. So I'll get this astronomer cosmos. Um, just gonna put here, uh, press enter, and then get the other one, which is the fabric DBT. That one there. Let me just do this one. I'm going to enter and I'm going to apply. That should be fine. And as I said, I'm gonna create environmental variables. So if you see here on my profiles, I'm using nvars for the EMO file, which is collecting this data. So let's just do one by one. My fabric warehouse connector. So that's the first one. Need to go back. And then I'm gonna put here, can you see environment variables? Put new. Click that and the fabric connection is, uh, I need to open a new window, otherwise I'll lose that. So I'm just gonna go to fabric and my workspace, that's the airflow one. So I'll go to my taxi and you go to the little cog here, SQL endpoint, copy this. And then go back here, paste. Cool, I need three more uh, environment variables. So the next one is the Azure tenant ID, which is going to be here. And you get that one from your um, service principle. Uh, tenant ID is this one. And you paste here. And then you do two more. Let's get the client ID. Which you get from the service principle. Um, client ID, this one. Go back to here. And lastly, you have to put your secret. Um, the secret, as I said, is coming from here. So it's hidden because after you save, it kind of like mask. So I've saved that into this M file here. So that's my secret for that service principle then go back here save that one here and the name of the variable is secret something yeah azure client secret which matches to my profiles environment variable here so let's finish that and save and put apply. So that was environment variables are available in my um, Apache Airflow instance because that may run in a machine that has got those environment variables available.
cool let's close that but now because i'm using that uh, with um, git you see that i've got this sync to a git repository so on my master branch so i've got this saved in my github so i'm gonna make available that into um, your description in this video so i've got this same information here my dags everything is here cool so how do i sync that to my airflow it's very simple i go my airflow instance here click the cog file storage can you see that it's a fabric managed file storage i'm just gonna switch that to git i put github so git credentials type is none because this repository is public so no problem i just need to go to code uh, and then go to this green here go to https copy that one and paste here and lastly you need to put the branch that you want to sync which is the master one and then once you apply it says file created via the managed storage solution will delete and no longer be available you put continue that should be fine it's saving and you, you will no longer all have access to that uh, fabric managed because now it's you're using git so just to see if everything is working you click this monitor airflow and that's gonna open the airflow server ui you just need to authenticate and at the moment it's nothing showing here because maybe it's syncing uh, it takes a while let's see if those tags will pop up here eventually let's wait a few minutes because we just done the sync my DAG has popped up here it looks like it's running let's see if that's gonna be successful it's running hopefully that's gonna be fine sometimes it fails for some reason but I've tested yeah it's been successful that's green that's great let's go to our warehouse to see if the model was created so i'll go to my taxi and dbo tables and there we go my my query has been created so that's the demo that i'd like to show you guys i hope this helps uh if you have any questions put on the comments below uh if you have any questions further you can also or any doubt you can go through that uh, demo and I'll put in the description the GitHub and for everything so you can do it yourself. And obviously, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, it should be fairly simple. If you are more a coder rather than like UI, you want to automate that into Git CI CD, that's a, go a good option to use uh, Fabric DBT Airflow. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, like the video and see you next time. Thank you.